What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So we had a really good show tonight. I thought it was solid from top to bottom. We had a couple championship matches. We saw the debut of Brian Cage. Um, yeah, so let's get right into it. So we opened the show with Sammy Callahan and OVE at ringside, of course, versus Bobby Lashley. This was after what happened last week with uh, OVE attacking Lashley from behind in the parking lot and then throwing him in the trunk of a car. So we do not know how he escaped, but anyway. So obviously this was pretty much a handicap match from the beginning because uh, the Chris brothers got involved right away. But Lashley was able to make pretty short work of them. Uh, I think he threw Jake into the steps and threw Dave into the guardrail. Uh, Sammy came out and got the upper hand. So he beat on Lashley for a little while. Uh, at one point, he threw him into where the ring announcer was and then had him sitting in a chair on the outside and started running a lap around the ring to, I guess, gain speed to hit Lashley. And as he was coming around, Lashley gets up and hits him with a spear. So at this point, the majority of the match took place on the outside. So they get back in the ring. And then we had a really good enjoyable back and forth match from then on out um Callahan looked pretty strong in this uh pretty much going toe to toe with Lashley um eventually Lashley is able to hit the spear he went for it once before but Callahan had reversed it into a guillotine choke um so yeah Lashley hits the spear goes for the pin Chris Brothers jump in the ring start beating Lashley down uh, ref throws the match out, so Lashley wins by disqualification, and then Edwards comes out to make the save, and oh, uh, I think Lashley threw one of the Chris brothers into um, Sammy Callahan on the outside, and later on in the evening, we get word that next week it will be Edwards and Lashley versus OVE, so that is good, the storyline's continually moving. Uh, so we go backstage, and Mackenzie is interviewing Eli Drake with Chris Adonis. Uh, Eli still claims that he is still rec the recognized champ, and despite what happened two weeks ago with him losing the championship, and he says nobody can stop him, and he w can't stop being the champ. So he is in a delusional world. Uh, so we go to LAX's clubhouse where... They are running down Caleb Conley and Trevor Lee, and then they talk about expanding in Mexico amongst just kind of back and forth between all four members. Then we get the Global Wrestling Network Rewind of the Week, and this is the Laurel Van Ness and Braxton Sutter wedding where we get the start of a crazy Laurel Van Ness. But uh, I, I don't really care that they do this. But I feel like it just goes on entirely too long. Not that it really took a lot out of the show, but it just since it's not really relevant, I, I just kind of think it's unnecessary. Maybe show 30 seconds and that, that should be it. Say you could see the rest of this on the Global Wrestling Network and plug it and that's that. So we go outside the arena and we see Allie coming to enter the arena and she hears this laugh and kind of looks around and looks down and notices there's a post-it on her luggage. And it says to meet me at t the tunnel at 22, which I had no idea what that meant, but it didn't matter. So then we hear Austin Aries and he's talking about the surprise victory he had two weeks ago and then his hyping his match with Eli Drake tonight. Then we get a backstage interview with Mackenzie interviewing Moose, who... Apparently, Alberto claims that Moose cost him the number one contendership match, and at this point, Moose gets attacked by Alberto from behind, so we learn later on in the show that Alberto versus Moose will be set for next week. And up next, we have Hanaya versus Rosemary. So I don't know if this is the last time we will see Hanaya, but... Um, we got a decent little match here. Hanaya controlled the majority of the match, surprisingly. Uh, Rosemary had a few flourishes of offense in there. But Hanaya goes for a crossbody off the top. Rosemary uses her momentum to roll through and picks up a three count. So it was an, uh, a little bit of an abrupt ending. But uh, after the match, Hanaya attacked Rosemary. She throws her into the steps on the outside, goes for that reverse DDT on the steps. Rosemary starts biting Hanaya's hand. Hanaya slips out. 
Uh, Rosemary goes for the Red Wedding. She slips out again, and Hanaya runs up the stage, and that's that. So, like I said, I, I know she had made her exit out of the company, so I don't know how much longer we are going to see her on the show, but... So up next, we see Allie at the meeting spot, where she finds a box of candy and a card on top. She starts reading the card, and Laurel Van Ness pops out of a box, attempting to attack her. Allie obviously sees her, smacks her in the face with the box of candy. They battle for a bit. Allie knocks her back into the box, slams the lid, and that is that. I was kind of hoping for a swerve here, but it makes sense since the two have been feuding. So up next, we have the tag team match with Matt Seidel and Johnny Impact versus EC3 and a mystery partner. Uh, right before the match, we see EC3 talking with Tyrus, who is his mi the mystery partner. Uh, this was this match was a lot of fun. Uh, Tyrus got welcome back chance as he as the match began. Um, Seidel and Impact worked well together. Uh, I'd love to see a match between the two of them in the future. But again, EC3 and Tyrus have a, a a history together, so obviously they were working well together. Um, but yeah, it was good to see Tyrus back. Like I said, the he had got a good reaction from the crowd. Um, but a good back and forth match. You know, at one point face is controlled and the heels controlled. Uh, toward the end of the match, uh, Johnny Impact throws EC3 into the corner. He goes for a springboard off the ropes to kick. EC3 in the corner, but Tyrus knocks him off the rope. Impact goes down. Uh, EC3 puts his feet on the rope, rolls up Impact for the victory, and that is that. Um, later on in the show, we find out that uh, Johnny Impact is putting up his number one contendership against EC3 in a match next week. So a lot of matches, uh, you know, going, we're just continually going. Something happens, we got another match, which is good, because that's that's really what I want to say. So we get to see Jimmy Jacobs and Congo Kong enter an office building, and we see on the door that it is Park, Park, and Park. Um, so Jacobs and Kong enter the office, and uh, Jacobs kind of says that he's expected more. He expected Abyss to come out and play, and he said if, you know, if he won't come out and play, we'll just have to force him out. So Jacob signals Kong to destroy the office. He throws the computer on the ground, slams the desk, and then he finishes off by taking a picture of Grandma Jenny off the wall and smashing it on the ground. This is this is a good segment. Anything with Jimmy Jacobs is fantastic. I like the way they're building up Congo Kong, and they're just building up the feud because it's it's. I'm excited to see it. It should be a good match. And we get the debut of Brian Cage. He was facing John Cruz uh, in a squash match, but Cage looked fantastic. His strength is incredible. He uh, basically threw Cruz around in the ring. He hit him with a power bomb and then a buckle bomb. Hit him with a nasty uh, disc forearm, and then uh, Cage ends up getting the win with the drill claw, which is like a. Uh, vertical suplex pile driver so it's a pretty cool move um best way to introduce a dominant force because I, I believe they are going to build cage up to be one of their core guys which makes the most sense in the world because he's very good in the ring and he's huge <laughs> um so backstage we go, and Caleb Conley and Trevor Lee decide that they're going to find LAX before LAX finds them. Um, so they're walking backstage, and they open up a door, and they see Fala Ba in there eating candy. And uh, he kind of covers up the candy and then groans, and then they close the door. And they say, you should be ashamed of yourself, Ba. Um, and then they see the Mumbai Cats come out from another door, and they go, hey, maybe that's LAX. So they go and attack them, rip the masks off, and it is not LAX. Um, then we get the X Division Championship match with Phantasma versus Taiji Ishimori. Um, this is a good back-and-forth match, another match that the crowd was into. I didn't make note of that. The crowd was much better tonight, which I think was day two of the tapings rather than the last two weeks where they 
really weren't into it too, too much at spots. But tonight it seemed like they were into it throughout the whole show, which was nice to see because that definitely adds an element to the performers in the ring. Um, but yeah, this is a back and forth match. Very even. We got a lot of action outside the ring. Uh, Phantasm hit the arrow from the depths of hell. Ishimura hit a Hurricane Rana and then hit a Moonsault off the turnbuckle, much like last week, I think he did in the tag match. Um, but action eventually went back into the ring. Ishimura hits the double knees, followed by the 450 splash for the win. So that was pretty good match. Um, the exhibition matches have been getting better and better. I uh, can't wait to see Desmond Xavier back. Uh, I believe they had said that he was in Japan, um, so he probably was not there for this round of tapings. And that led us to the main event of Eli Drake against the champion Austin Aries for the Impact World Championship. Um, this was a good match. They built it as, well, I should say it had a big match feel to it. Uh, the crowd was really split for Aries and Eli Drake. They were into the match um, completely back and forth throughout the match. Both men looked good. We got a lot of offense from both. Uh, one point, Aries hits a suicide dive onto Chris Adonis on the outside because Drake moved out of the way. Adonis goes crashing into the guardrail, hits the first row of people, basically. Uh, Aries goes to check on them, and then... At this point, since his attention is averted, Drake picks him up, kind of throws him onto the apron, hits his back, and he hits, it looked like he hit his head on the ropes. It was just, it definitely looked pretty nasty. Action spilled back into the ring. Uh, Eli goes for the gravy train. Aries rolls him up and then reverses it into the last chancery. At this point, Chris Adonis gets up on the apron. Aries gets up, hits Adonis. Eli goes for a roll-up. Aries kicks out, hits a discus forearm, and then the Brain Buster to retain the championship. So, yeah, like I said, this definitely makes up for the match that we got two weeks ago when Aries won the championship. Uh, this was, like I said, really enjoyable. I enjoyed the show from top to bottom. Um, we also heard during the program that uh, the WrestleCon event that takes place the Friday before WrestleMania, I believe, uh, will be streamed live on Twitch. So that is awesome because that is definitely what they should be doing. Um, Sanjay sounded great on commentary this week. I, I thought he was good last week, but he sounded even better this week. I definitely think he adds a lot more than Borash had recently because, like I said, they kind of felt disconnected with the product. Um not much else to say. Like I said, a really good show. I enjoyed it from top to bottom. Book ended the show well. And that's really all I got for you. I have a bunch of news for Saturday on the Impact Report. And until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.